and I'm waiting for it to pop up. So when it pops up on your feed, share it so that people can know that we're, we're here. And um, I'm waiting for it to pop up on my feed. Um, it should be any moment. And there it went. Hallelujah. Welcome. Welcome. Glory to God. I had to see, what, I had to see where the camera was. In case y'all are wondering, there's a red light that comes on the camera that's recording or, or broadcasting. So I know what, you're kind of like a television studio. I know which camera is actually recording me at that moment. Okay? You know, television cameras in a studio have a light on them. And, uh, you, you know, you used to be on television. They say, now, you know, make sure you know what a red light is. And so you, you try to be real casual about it. But you, you learn over being, if you've been on television a few times, you learn to find the red light <laughs> on, the, on the camera. And, um, but in here, I got to turn all the way around if it's not on that one. Well, welcome to Expedition Church Wednesday night Bible study. Glad to have you with us. Praise the Lord. We're continuing in our um, uh, ongoing series, the Bible, In the Light of Our Redemption by E.W. Kenyon. We do recommend highly that you purchase this book, study it yourself. You say, well, you're on Lesson 31 or 37. That's fine. Go back. All of these services are online. You can follow along with us there. You can do it for yourself. I just think this is a really good Bible study course. Um, it, it's he calls it his basic Bible, basic Bible course, the Bible in the light of our redemption from Genesis to Revelation by E. W. Kenyon. And uh, Dr. Kenyon uh, wrote this before, obviously, before he went home to be with the Lord. He did have a follow-up to that, a advanced Bible course. Um, we'll see if we do that one. You know. Um, he gets into some meteor stuff in there. Hallelujah. Um, very, I, I love his writings. So although we're reading from his book and working from his book, I, I just encourage you, Amazon or Walmart.com, about $13, $15, $15 between that price range. Uh, it's worth having. It, it's, it'd be good to have in your library. Okay? Praise the Lord. Now, under the Old Covenant, God manifests himself as one God or revealed himself to Israel as one God. Know you not the Lord. He is one God. Okay? Okay. Um, this, the, the um, revelation at that time was very interesting because, you know, it was a, a polytheistic world. Um, and as our prior president two ago said, America was no longer a uh, Christian nation. It was a polytheistic nation. And um, there you go. The, the leader of the, of the country went saying that we're no longer a Christian nation. We're polytheistic, you know, and we need to, you know, whatever. No, we, we are a Christian nation. We were founded on that basis. We were founded on that uh, ideal, the providence. All, it's all through the, the founding documents. Um, albeit, they didn't say Jesus Christ, um, you know, but it was it, providence, and providence right on. Um, there has been talk about changing the name because it's a it's separation of church and state. You know, they want to, because the word providence is used. And they, they, they refer to divine influence. They refer to providence, God. Okay? Um, and the God that they were referring to was the God of the Bible. Okay? Um, yeah, I, I know. Listen. Okay, Jefferson was a deist. I, I get some of the stuff. I know not every single last one of them was a born again, Bible toting believer. However, that was the position of where they took their morals from, okay, and their presentation from. Um, when God came to the earth in the person of the, of the Son of God, Jesus, he was then revealed as three in one. Amen? Uh, we, we become conscious of the Trinity, and um, which is something that was not revealed under the Old Covenant. Not clearly. Now, it is revealed in the name of God. In the beginning, God said, the word for God is Elohim, E-L-O-H-I-M. And it means majesty in the plurality of three or more. Literally means that, okay, in the Hebrew. <coughs> so when God said, when God, and then, of course, Genesis, and God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness after our kind. Yet it was still lost to them because, you know, he said, the Lord, he is God, he is one. They, they went, they, they kind of zeroed on it and just didn't really pick up on the a triune existence of God. Okay. Um, however, when Jesus comes and says, I'm the Father, you know, I proceed forth from the Father, 
uh, I and my Father are one. And then he says, I'm going to send forth the Holy Ghost. All of a sudden now we're talking something different than the that concept that they had had. Okay? Um, Jesus said this. He has seen me, seen the Father. Remember Philip came to him? He said, show us the Father and it's sufficient for us. And then J Jesus turns to Philip and goes, Philip, have I been with you so long? I, I'm going to put it modern. Okay? Have I been with you long, so long you ain't figured it out yet? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Okay? That, that's what he said. If you ain't figured that out yet, there's a problem here. Because if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. All right? Hallelujah. And um, the tri so in his teachings, the third person is brought in as being God also. Um, and, you know, the, the Holy Ghost. Remember Jesus says in four, uh, John 14, 26, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said unto you. Now, this is in this, the, the, the great discourse here where he begins there, um, gets into John 14 through John 17, and um, begins talking about the comforter. I will send you another comforter. Okay? A um, couple of interesting words there in the Greek. Uh, comforter is parakletos, or um, which is a variant of paraclete. Um, and, you know, like languages, they have voice, they have tenses, they have moods, they have all this stuff in words. So, but, so the, the, root, the root word or the mother word of parakletos is paraclete. Okay? P-A-R-A-K-K-L-E-A, -A -K -K I think. Or E-E, A-E-E. -E. And then toast, take off one of the E's, but T-O-S, paracletos. Well, Jesus says, I'll send you another paracletos. Comforter. Um, advocate. Now, now that word carried a, a much broader meaning than simply a comforter. Okay, Jesus said, "I'll not leave you comfortless. I'll send you another comforter." But he said, "Paraclete, Paraclete, I'll send you another advocate. I'll send you another comforter. I'll send you another strengthener. I'll send you another helper. I'll send you another teacher." I'll send you another intercessor, and I'll send you another standby. Now, that's what that word entailed. So to the Greek ear, when he said paraclete, they heard all that. Okay? They heard all of that. Just like when the Greek heard, when they heard uh, phileo, they heard brotherly love. Okay? When they heard agape, after Jesus coined it, and it became part of theological, when they heard agape, it meant unconditional love, the love that the Father has, the love that the Father gave, uh, uh, demonstrating giving of his Son. Okay? So, Pericle carries that full, broad meaning. So, he did not leave us helpless. He did not leave us without strength. He did not leave us without an intercessor. See, all of that. Now, the other really interesting thing is um, the word, I'll give you another. Now, that word seems just like a normal word, doesn't it? I'll give you another one. You know? Um, this. Don't send us another one. Okay? That wasn't broke. Wasn't scratched up. Wasn't messed up. Okay? In the Greek, that word another carries and conveys this meaning. One after the same manner as myself. One after the same manner as myself. Or, literally, one just like me. I'm going to send one just like me. I'm going to send a helper, strengthener, standby, advocate, intercessor, um, teacher, uh, all those different things, just like me. Except he will not be limited by corporeity or corporeity, by, by, by body. He won't be limited by a body. Jesus was limited to time and space when he walked the earth in his natural earthly body. When he got his glorified body, he could walk through the walls, come and go as he pleased. But he still couldn't be in multiple places. Okay? Now, he could get to another place real quick. But the Holy Ghost was to come and to be everywhere, be omnipresent, as, but be just like Jesus. 
the second person of the Godhead. Amen? Remember, he said, he will come and he will only do that. Um, he, he will only, he will remind you what several things I've, I, I've taught you. Jesus said of himself, I only do those things which I see the Father do. The Holy Ghost came to do what Jesus did. Just like him. Okay? And so he, you know, I will send another just like me. Okay? Um, coming to take his place, but not be limited where you got to have the, you know, the 12 disciples or the 120 in the upper room or the, you know, whatever in this particular finite, defined natural space. He could be all over the world at the same time doing what Jesus did as he walked on the earth in a body. Now, remember, before the incarnation, Jesus did not have a body as we know it. God had a spiritual, God has a spiritual body. God told Moses, uh, you can't look on my face, his face, but I'll hide you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand. And as I pass by, I'll remove it and you can see my hinder parts. You can see from the backside. He walked. We know he walked. No, he has hands. No, he has a face. But it's a spiritual body. And when they see God, um, Abraham Remember Abraham and his covenant when he slew the, had the animals and he was taken into a deep sleep and he awoken, he awakened and the smoking furnace was walking between the sacrifice. Amen. Glory to God. When they looked on Mount, uh, um, huh? Come on, help me out, guys. The Mount of God. Moriah? No. Horeb. Horeb. Or God, I'm, I try not to say the Muslim one, but when he was, it burned with fire. Moses shows up, there's a bush burning. Okay, so God, God is, is view his body is is uh, is visually in the realm of the spirit like fire, the glory. It's the glory. They don't have they didn't have a way to describe the glory. Amen. Just like, now I saw the dumbest thing. Came across my feed in Facebook yesterday. One of my friends, actually one of my high school friends who now lives over in Kernersville. Um, we graduated from high school down east together. And now they live in Kernersville. And um, they are now looking to do nude pickle paddle ball, pickle ball. And, and, and all I can think is why? A bunch of old, saggy folks running around playing pickleball nude. I mean, just to talk about it, the image is, is like, I can't handle that. You know? Now, Janice, you're watching. I need a comment from Janice out there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We'll see what she says. Hallelujah. See, all these, remember back in the 70s, 60s and 70s, when the big thing was for nudist colonies. Because that's the way Adam and Eve were in the garden. They, 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 claimed, they, they were trying to blame the Bible for all this. Well, the truth of the matter is they were not naked. Adam and Eve were not naked in the garden. Now, yeah. Janet said, nasty. <laughs> I'm sure she would have said that if she'd been sitting on the front row. <laughs> nasty. The, the truth of the matter is this. They were born of God, a light being. When he created the body from the dust of the ground and he breathed into it, Remember that both the Hebrew and the Greek word for breath, wind, and spirit is the same. What well, the, the Greek words form, like the Greek is pneuma. I forgot what it is in the Hebrew. But both of them mean spirit, wind, and breath. Okay? So pneuma means spirit or wind or breath. The Hebrew counterpart means the same thing. 
So when God breathed into them the breath of life, you could literally say he breathed into them the spirit of life. He took of his spirit. That body was not alive until God put part of, took part of his spirit and put it in there. And what did he say? To, what did he say? Elohim said, let us make man in what? In our image, after our likeness, and after our kind. So man was a light being. We get a glimpse of it in the Old Testament when Moses came down out of the mount. After he had been in the presence of God. I'm not getting very far in my notes. Okay. Uh, okay. We'll just get there when we get there. When Moses came down out of the mount after being in the presence of God for 40 days on a supernatural fast. He was in the presence of God. The, the presence of God sustained him during that time. But when he came down, his physical body had absorbed the glory to the point they couldn't look on his face. They had to put a veil over it. Hello. And that's the Old Testament. The New Testament we see is the transfiguration. Peter, James, and John go with Jesus up into the mount. They fall asleep, and they wake up right in the middle of, you know, close encounters of the third kind. You know, Jesus is glowing. <laughs> hey, you know what I'm saying? I mean, his raiment turns bright white, and the glory is coming out of him. What happened? For a moment, he let the glory out in the presence of his Father. Amen. Post-resurrection, we see it on the Damascus Road. Paul was breathing out threatenings. And as he went, <clears throat> there's a light shone on them brighter than the noonday sun. And a voice spoke out. It was Jesus showing up in his glory. They just thought it was a bright light. And let's now, let's take all that. And so it knocked to the ground. What would you have me to do, Lord? Da, 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 da. Go back to Genesis, Adam and Eve. They were not nasty butt naked. They were clothed in the glory of God. That light being that they had been created was emanating out of them. <clears throat> and such a, an almost a, a field of the glory around them it wasn't until Adam committed high treason, they ate the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden, and they were born again from life unto death. The light went out that they saw they were naked. God comes down and says, Adam, where are you? He said, uh, I heard your voice and I hid myself. He said, have you eaten of the fruit? Who told thee that thou was naked? Have you eaten of the fruit that I forbade thee? Well, the woman. Here we start the first past the buck still deal. You know? Well, you know, hey, you know what? If you had if you if I had kept my rib, we wouldn't have this problem right now. I just want you to know that. You don't want to came down to it the rib. Goes to the woman, what about it? She said, Well, the serpent beguiled me. You know. <clears throat> Everybody's passing the buck. But immediately so fig leaves together, fig leaves together and covered themselves. So, no, they were not running around naked as we see it. How come you get off on all that? Good anyway. The glory of God. Amen. So, um, the, the Bible is very specific. It only refers to three persons of the Godhead. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go into all the world, preaching the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be, uh, go, go forth and baptize them in the name of the Father. I got, I got to get the right gospel. Go, go forth, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Okay. Um, Nathan Wood, the author of The Secret of the Universe, 
defines God as absolute threeness and absolute oneness. There are absolutely three manifestations of God who is a one triune being. Now, I want to mess your theology up. Did you know there's seven spirits of God? The Holy Ghost has seven manifestations. But he's still the Holy, all the Holy Spirit. Spirit of wisdom and counsel. The spirit, you know, you know you, there you go. I just mess these people up. There are things about the supernatural and about the spirit realm that we just won't be able to grasp because we haven't seen it. You just can't, you, you can't get it because you still, you still got that body you're dealing with. That's why Paul said, when I was called up into the third heaven, I heard things unlawful to be uttered. Remember that? I knew a man about 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. Such a one was called up into the third heaven and heard things unlawful to be uttered. Amen. I believe, uh, and, most, and most theologians, if you study, believe, this experience happened when Paul was stoned and left for dead. Okay? That he was called up into the third heaven. And he saw, he saw the spirit of man, the new creation, because there have been martyrs already. He saw born again people. He saw that spiritual thing. What happened in a man when they came to Christ? He saw that. Now, it took him the rest of his ministry to write that out in, the, in his letters. We call the Pauline Revelation. And the, the large part of Paul's revelation is who we are in Christ. Okay? Who we are in Christ. What it means to be born again. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. That new creation reality and revelation is what Paul saw. And he just couldn't come back and go, man, I'm going to tell you what, I just got from back from heaven, and you guys don't even have a clue. They're glowing going up there. <laughs> he couldn't do it that way. It had to be done through the teachings, the writings, which is his sermons, his doctrine. It had to be done through his, through his writings so that we could uh, uh, digest it, assimilate it, and, 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 and understand it. And he had to do it through scriptural basis, as it is written. Amen. You know, Paul says, as it is written. Okay? And so, um, to express that was, was a hard thing to do. And, but it took, him, it took him some time. So, the absolute threeness. Now, no two of the three of, of the Trinity exist without the other. Amen? The three are absolutely one. Each one is represented. Each one is represented as God. Now listen, the Holy Spirit. People come every so often. Somebody goes somewhere. Somebody got a heavy revy. When they come back with heavy revies, are usually too heavy to handle. Okay, got a heavy revy. <coughs> I went to this meeting. The Holy Ghost is it. God, he's a force. It's a, it's a force, not a person. I always want to deny. Now, let me ask you something. How many forces can be blasphemed against? All manner of blasphemy against the Father and the Son shall be forgiven, but blasphemy of the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven. Jesus is saying, me and the Father are people, and we'll forgive you for blaspheming, but the Holy Ghost is just a force, and you can't blaspheme him. It won't be forgiven. Yeah, thank you. Makes your head go tilt, don't it? They always, come, they always want to attack the deity of the Holy Ghost and make the Holy Spirit simply a force, a cosmic energy, but not the third person of the Godhead. Not God. The Holy Spirit is God. The Son is God. The Father is God. 
Amen. You have um, denominations, and sad to say, they're Pentecostal. Excuse me. And they refer to as apostolic, and they we call them Jesus only. Jesus is everything. Jesus is the Father. Of the, Jesus is the Holy Spirit. The, the Father is Jesus. The Holy Spirit is Jesus. You know, and they use that that scripture in First Corinthians where it says. Um, there is one Lord, there is one God. They use that one little thing, isolated. And when you study it, <clears throat> Paul's saying there is one Lord, there is one God. Now that I open the can of corn, we may as well go cook it and eat it. Amen. What about your notes? They'll be here next time. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Probably read the wrong chat book. It might be Second Corinthians. I do that. Listen, you don't know the precise verse and whatever. Did you ever see Jesus give verse and chapter? I mean, Jesus got real, uh, whatever. Um, as it's written in the Psalms. There's 151 of them. 50? I just added one. You know? How about this one? How about this one, Jesus? Yeah, 150. I had to go back and confirm. It's written in the prophets. Which one? Are y'all here? You go home. Okay. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on. I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cheat. Y'all, if y'all ever cheated, I'm cheating. Okay, New Testament one, Lord. That spell checker did something weird. No, no, it's going to give me First Corinthians chapter eight. That's why I was I was way past there. First Corinthians eight. For though there be or there there are those that are called gods, whether in heaven or earth, there are, there. Are uh, be God's many and Lord's many, but to us there is but one God, the Father. Um, that is still not it. That is not as good, but I know I do. Baptism. There was a one God thing, in, but. <laughs> To what I'm looking for is in Ephesians. We've been looking all night, guys. As it's written in the New Testament, there is one body, one spirit, even as you're called, and one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all, within you all. Now they use this to say there's only that that Jesus is everything. They baptize in the name of Jesus only. You can't baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost like Jesus told us to. You baptize anything other than Jesus only, you're not saved. You don't speak in tongues, you're not saved. So if you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost, come on down tonight, we'll get you filled so you can get saved. Okay? Because we don't, we don't want you going to hell. He's, he's back up here, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body. There, there is only one body of Christ. There's one Spirit. There's one Holy Ghost. Even if you're called, one hope you're calling. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Well, there is one Lord and faith and baptism for salvation. Baptism in water doesn't save you. Baptism in the Holy Spirit doesn't save you. Baptism into the body of Christ saves you. 1 Corinthians 12 does, does say... 
for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Okay? One God and Father of all. Okay? God manifestedly in our midst to us and through us and, and in his existence is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Three people, three persons, yet uniquely and divinely one in God. No way around it. I don't understand it. Can I be honest with you? I don't get it all either. We're gonna go, there's a, you know, there's an interesting scripture John makes in his epistle. He said, when he shall appear, when he appears, we should be like him, for we shall, we shall see him as he is. That's what John says. When he, when he appears, we should be like him, for we shall see him as he is. What's he talking about? He's talking about the rapture of the church. What's going to happen is we're walking this thing out. No, we know we're spirit. We know we're, we're body. Okay. Um, we know these things. But yet there's this limitation of our un ability to fully understand it and get it. But when he appears, we're going to go, oh, and step right over. Oh, that's it. You ever had that happen when you're trying to do something, trying to figure out something, or try to get something done, and you can't figure it out, and all of a sudden somebody walks up and goes, oh, it's that easy, huh? You couldn't get it to save your neck for nothing. And then when you see it done, you're like, wow. Y'all seen the horseshoe things at Cracker Barrel with a ring on it? Yeah. And you, you fiddle faddle around with that thing for hours or whatever. Maybe you don't, maybe but I have. One time I have gotten one peg on the triangle thing. Most of the time I'm an agoramus. Okay? Or I, I, sometimes I hear Dr. Phil going, you're an idiot. <laughs> you know? I mean, you're like, how did I do it that time? If I'd been recording, I could have done it from then on, but I didn't. And so I'm, you know, I'm stuck wondering, how did I do it that time? You know what I'm saying? All right. Um, each of the three persons of the Trinity are God. Co-equal. There, there is a hierarchy, apparently, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus only sees what he does when he sees the Father do. And, this, and remember, Jesus said of the Holy Spirit, he should not speak of himself. But he'll bring to you remembrance whatsoever things I have done and said. Okay? Um, how can there be a hierarchy and they be equal? I don't understand the Borg, much less the Trinity. Okay, if y'all never watched Star Trek, the Borg. Y'all remember, anybody know who the Borg are? You know, lower your shields. We will add your biological distinctiveness to our collective. You know, I don't understand the collective. Okay, Data didn't either. I please explain to me the collective. You know, how many have never seen Star Trek and the Borg? Oh, you haven't. It's way too complicated to try to bring you up stuff on that one. Okay, didn't care for it. Yeah, because it really it really works in my sermon right now. Yeah, resistance is futile. That's right. Stop it. And there's all kinds of stuff starting to go through my head, you know, with Picard. Uh, all right, the Word makes clear to us that the Father is first, the Son is second, the Holy Spirit is third. It does not mean that one is first in deity, for all are God. It does not mean that one is greater, for all are infinite. It does not mean that one is first in time, for all are eternal. It can mean only that the Father is first, the Son is second, and the Spirit is third in logical order, and that's as far as we can go with it because that's, that's all we can know. Okay? All right. The Father works through the Son, and in Him, through Him, He creates. Um, Colossians 1.16 declares, for in Him were all things created, 
the heavens and upon the earth, things visible and things invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things have been created through him and unto him. Now, some very interesting things, and I'm, I, I really am not going to get through this tonight. Um, there are works attributed to the Father in the um, uh, that the that is attributed to, to to Jesus, that in the Old Testament attributed to the Holy Spirit. Right here, for in Him were all things created. I was the Holy Spirit was creating. God, I mean, God was working through the Trinity to do all everything that was done. Okay, again, bringing us back to if. The Holy Spirit is attributed with creation. Jesus is attributed with it. And it said God created the heavens and the earth. Then the Holy Spirit can't be a force. Okay? The Spirit, like the Father, is unseen. The chief work of the Holy Ghost is to reveal the Son. And in the Son, He reveals the Father. Jesus came to reveal the Father. The Father himself loveth thee. Remember that Jesus said that? The Father himself, he loveth thee. The church has failed to properly introduce the Father and the Spirit as God worthy of equal worship to Jesus. We're so thankful for Jesus. As well, we should be. But Jesus said, Amen, that the Father Himself loveth us. Not just Him. Not just Jesus loves us, the Father loves us. Amen. And the love of God was shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. Amen. So, um, Christ is working in the earth today through the Spirit in people. Um, a knowledge of who the Holy Spirit is is essential. Now, we study the teachings of Jesus. We study the ministry of Jesus. We study what Jesus did. We study that he ever lives to make intercession for us. He's our faithful high priest. He's our redeemer. He's our Savior. Glory to God, all of that true. We should never stop. But we also need to be acquainted with the Holy Spirit as the third person of the Godhead and not, you know, and as a Pentecostal, we were bad about this. Okay. We knew the Holy Ghost as tongues or a goosebump. Now that's just the truth. We, our revelation and understanding of the spirit was the power and the manifestations but not the person. And yet the Word of God says to grieve not the Holy Spirit. He has feelings. He can grieve. He can be grieved. Amen. <clears throat> so we, we don't properly have a, a a right understanding, I just say in a general sense. I know there are people who do. Praise the Lord when you do. Glory, I'm glad you do if you do. But in a general sense, there is not the proper understanding that the Holy Spirit is God, worthy of worship, <clears throat> worthy of adoration. Amen. He is God at work in our life. Where, where do we run to 99% of the time? Jesus. And there's nothing wrong with running to Jesus. But in our worship, where do we run to almost all the time? Jesus. Not, not every, not everything. But as a general rule, the body of Christ runs to Jesus in our worship. Sometimes we'll get the Father in there. And Hillsong has brought out some stuff with the Holy Spirit. But, as a, but uh, by and large, the, the worship is aimed at Jesus. And I'm not saying we shouldn't in any way, shape, or form, but we should at least expand that to include the Father and the Spirit. 
because the Holy the Father Himself loves you. The Holy Spirit's come to reveal the, the, the Son who's come to reveal the Father. Amen. Amen. Um, A.J. Gordon, in his book, The Ministry of the Holy Spirit, wrote this. Why not employ the same method in writing about the third person of the Trinity as we use in considering the second person of the Trinity? Okay. Now, we do have a book in the Bible that really talks about um, the, 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 the Holy Spirit. It's called the book of Acts. It ain't the book of the Acts of the Apostles. This is the Acts of the Holy Ghost through the church. It is the Spirit of God in manifestation. We don't call um, the Gospels, the um, the disciple church, the early disciple church. Now, J. B. Phillips calls the Book of Acts uh, the early the uh, the young church in action. Yeah, you know, I, I like I love J. B. Phillips. I love the way he worded stuff. I love the way he said stuff. You know, whenever you got one person doing a translation, some people can kind of, you know, they'll find a point they disagree on. But overall, I just love my favorite verse of J.B. Phillips is Galatians 3.1. Oh, ye dear idiots of Galatia, who hath bewitched you? <laughs> when they were talking about going back to the law. Oh, ye dear idiots of Galatia. I just, you can't say it any better than that. <laughs> That's just perfect. Um, but one of my, I mean, really, it's, it's probably my favorite translation for saying things in a way that cut through all the other stuff. Okay? So the young church in action. What's the young church in action doing? Remember Jesus said this, go to Jerusalem and tear there until what? Until you be endued with power from on high. After that, the, after which the Holy Ghost has come upon thee. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. He did not say go witness. He said go wait until you've got the Holy Spirit coming on you. Then you'll be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. They needed the dispensational outpouring of the Holy Spirit in their life to be with them like Jesus was with the disciples. Hello, to teach, to guide, to instruct, to lead. Amen. They needed the Holy Ghost. Amen. So important to be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Now, I know, again, being a classical Pentecostal, I, I, I kind of get to running the classical and the neoclassical Pentecostals. You know, I'm Pentecostal and neo-Pentecostal. Neo just meaning new. I'm the, which are charismatics. Charismatics were neo-Pentecostalists. For, referred to as neo-Pentecostalism. Okay. Pentecostalism is the old fakes, you know, with the we have hairdos and all that stuff. But experience-wise, they they believe the same. They believe in the power. Of the, they believe in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the manifestation of the Spirit, being yielded to the Spirit, the Holy Ghost flowing through you, demonstrations of the Spirit taking place. Um, however, we need to have a relationship with the Spirit so that we can walk in harmony with him. Now, it's one of the dumbest things you'll ever hear said. People say it all the time. You never know what the Holy Ghost is going to do. Oh, yes, you do. Now, he may not manifest in every service the same way, but he's going to do what Jesus would have done in that instant, in that moment. Which is, what did he see the Father do? I only do those things which I see the Father do. So when Jesus raised people up from the dead, that's what he saw the Father. When, he, when, he, uh, when devils were cast out, he saw the Father. Hello? 
Well, when did God cast devils out? He cast the devil out. Remember? Bright and morning star, Lucifer. I'll ascend my throne into the heavens. I'll be as the most high. da 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 God says this, I'll cast thee as profane out of my mouth, out of my presence. And then Jesus says in Luke, he said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. What happened? Satan shows up, said, I'm taking over. I got a third of the angels with me. We are taking over heaven. The Father says, I cast you out. And at about 186,000 miles per second, which is the speed of light, lightning, he left heaven. And ran into the earth, coming down and having great wrath. That was not a real long battle. Y'all hear you going home. And we could go get in a whole nother world over there. We could, we could, oh, we could really get into some stuff over there. Okay, what the, it's 8 o'clock. We, we're going to stop, okay? So <clears throat> next week, uh, Dr. Bill will be with us. <coughs> we're going on um, our annual July 4th trip to the cabin. So we'll be, we'll be um, gone next week. Dr. Bill will be ministering. So come out and support Dr. Bill. And then Sunday week, uh, Olivia Moore. If y'all weren't here when Olivia came back in the, the community center, you'll just love her. She's a sweetheart. And she ministers. Um, she went through a hard place in her life, and she, she wrote a book, um, I think it's something like you should not be known for this or something. Um, I, I forgot the title, but that's basically what the Lord told her. Um, you won't be known for this because, you know, she looked like a failure. <coughs> and she's like a complete failure. <coughs> really wasn't, she had no control over what happened. And, you know, this, the, this, this thing happened. She looked like a failure, felt like a failure, went and hid. And then God spoke to her. So you should not be known for this. And brought her back. And now she travels all over the world, goes out in the, the bush of India or Nepal or wherever and lives three weeks without a bath. More power to her. Um, and, uh, but she, she's, she's, well, she's well gifted to minister, so we're looking forward to having her. So the tent, she'll be with us. Okay? You'll enjoy her. And uh, so be here that Sunday morning. Um, we're looking forward to having her back. Okay? All right. <clears throat> it is time to give. If you need an offering envelope, they're on the seat back in front of you. If you're going to give it electronically, go ahead and get your get to your cash app and <clears throat> get that out. You may be asking, are we going to be doing any more work? Yes. Um, tomorrow, we have to load up all the remaining cedar mulch onto Joe's trailer so we can take it away from here. Um, we got to put the fire pit together, I'm trying to make a half day tomorrow. I really am trying to make a half day, be like, be done by noon. Cause we've been here three, three days all day for three days. And Monday was like a four day work week by itself. Cause it was so humid and so hot. It was just plumb rough, won't it? You walk out, I mean, you just walk out in the door at 8 o'clock that morning, 9 o'clock that morning. You walk outside and you're like, oh, my goodness. It's like the weight of the air was just on you. And and Joe looked like he had jumped in a swimming pool. Yeah. And Nathan and Kat were, I mean, they were drenched. Uh, hauling, hauling mulch. Well, they, they put down 95% of the uh, barrier for the mulch to be put on top of. And then started hauling mulch. And they hauled and hauled and hauled. And when they finally quit, they still had as much left over as they, as they had hauled. That'll, that'll get you. You look at it, We looked at that hardwood uh, pile yesterday, and it was like, how many loads are these? That's when you start, well, isn't somebody nearby with a uh, bobcat and a front loader or something? We can just, you know, you can drive it. Nope, won't nobody. So it was wheelbarrow. So not a lot tomorrow. I think we're really, 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 you know, we got we got to level the ground for the fire pit, and that's real easy. You set the blocks down in a circle. When they get to it done, you just start the next row and, sh and shift it over the seam and go around, and then same thing on the third row, and then put that ring in the middle, and you're done. Throw some firewood in there and go for it. Have have some hot dogs over the grill. 
over the fire. All right. Father, we thank you for the tithe and offer. We thank you for the people that are blessed. We thank you for heaven's windows open unto them. And you pour out blessings they don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Go ahead, Joe. Receive that. Hallelujah. Um, what time will be here? Well, now that the picnic tables are here, unless Freddie tells me, the painter, that he's coming at 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm not going to be here at 8 o'clock in the morning. I've been here 8 o'clock in the morning three days this week. I'm not coming at 8 o'clock in the morning. Now, 8 o'clock in the morning on Monday, because Spectrum was supposed to be here at 8 o'clock. They got here at 6, 5, got here at 5. 8 o'clock this morning, because they're supposed to deliver the tables between 8 and 8, they got here at 6. Yes, 12-hour window. Yeah. Had a 12 hour window on the. Now, the spectrum was 8 to 9 a.m. So, yeah. Oh, Dick, I'm sorry. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Should have, we.